And the conversation that I want us to have is going to be very much focused on this reality of how it is that God is calling us not only to respond to Him by worshipping Him, and of course, the acts of worship are extremely important, but we are called to something so much more than simply empty repetition of ritual. We are called to be able to respond to God by recognizing that He desires to be in relationship with us, that we are called to know Him and to know Him intimately. That when the Lord created us, He created us with the intention of us being able to, as He says here, having fellowship with the Deity. We were called to be in communion with God, to be in relationship with Him, to have fellowship between us and the Divine. And the whole purpose behind this was because God desired to share His love with His creation. So you see, Right off the bat, we begin to realize that God never intended for us to simply be created just so we can please Him. It's not like God was sitting there looking to be entertained, and so He created humanity so that He can be entertained by what it is human beings would do to each other and how it is that they would worship Him. Rather, and we see this in the liturgy of St. Gregory, in the Coptic Orthodox tradition, there's a beautiful sentence that is stated in the prayers of the liturgy of St. Gregory, where it says that God created us out of goodness only. It is only because He is good. It is only because He is love that He created us so that He may share Himself with us. Now, if we are to continue down this path and to discuss this even further, what we begin to realize is that Scripture is absolutely riddled with examples of how it is that God is a personal being. And being a personal being, He desires relationship with us, His creation. We see this everywhere in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. Christ himself speaks of this. Listen to, for instance, what we read in the book of Acts. It says, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. And in line with that word, friend, I want you to pay attention to the icon that is put here on the screen. This icon is an icon that is found in um, one of the museums in Paris. I, be I believe it's in uh, the Museum of Louvre. A and this very specific icon is a an icon that was found in Egypt, 6th century Egypt. And the name of the icon is Mina, the abbot Mina and his friend. So what you see on the left there is the abbot of a monastery by the name of Minas. And his friend who is standing next to him is the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has his arm wrapped around him. You can even see the fingers of Christ wrapped over the right-hand shoulder of the abbot Mina. Why, why is this so important for us to discuss? Why, is it, why are we talking about friendship? Because if we really fully understood the mystery of God's love for us, we would realize that God's desire is not simply for us to undergo the process of, of pursuing empty, repetitious ritual, but rather, those rituals that the church introduces to us, that the apostles handed down to those that they taught Christianity to, those rituals were always meant to be a means to an end. And what was always the end goal? Real union and knowledge of God. It was never meant for us to simply undergo the process without us knowing who He truly is. We forget. We forget that the Lord knows us and that He wants us to reciprocate that knowledge by desiring to know Him. This is why we read in the Psalms how it is that the psalmist, when he speaks of this, the way that he expresses this, he talks about how it is that he is fearfully and wonderfully made by God. He says in Psalm 139, For you formed my inward parts, you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. We were never hidden from God. We have always been a part of His mind, His heart, and He has always had a desire for us. Knowing this about the God that we worship should invite you and me to desire to know Him even further. And this knowledge of God is precisely the foundation on which we can begin to have a real relationship with God. 